A very good morning. Today we have Sri Ataji sir, who is the Deputy Director in Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Uh, he has been kind enough to uh, highlight some of the important fields in the economic census application and how to go about them. So, uh, so far we have seen a lot of topics. In this video we are going to cover the different types of establishments based on the registration they have undergone. So, we, there can be certain organizations who have uh, multiple registrations and uh, a basic registration and additional registration. So, we will be covering both basic and the primary and the additional registration fields that has to be captured through economic census application and this is very critical because ministry is going to validate the data based on this. There is already a lot of data of various different types of registration is available with the ministry. So, a good uh, quality of data will be determined based on this. So, enumerators must take care that they properly enumerate the establishments. So, sir, uh, tell me about the establishments and the decision details, particularly starting with, with the primary types of registration. So, before we begin with the kinds of registrations that we have, we should again place more emphasis on the fact that the registration, like you said, the registration details are absolutely important uh, in, in, in terms of the perspective of the Ministry of Statistics. We have been highlighting, we, and it has been highlighted in the media as well that the seventh economic census is not where we stop. We take this as the platform to develop a dynamic national business register. The national business register will be the key, uh, the key output of the seventh economic census, based on which uh, we'll be, you know, asking the state governments to develop their own mechanisms of dynamically updating the business register, from which we'll be able to monitor the, uh, the say the employment in various establishments in the country, the total size of establishments of this country, the nature of activities these establishments undertake across the country and so on and so forth. So the, we expect that the enumerator and VLE will take extra caution, will take extra care in filling up the details of uh, the, the registration uh, of an establishment. This will be taken as one of the key indicators of performance of the CSC ecosystem and uh, in fact the enumerator has to ask the, the owner, the establishment, uh, owner of the establishment, the owner of the household or uh, even the respondent manager multiple times if the, whether the registration details have been captured correctly. Because basis this, the, as I said, the business register will come up uh, in future. So, <clears throat> as you already mentioned, the details once they come uh, to the IT platform, the IT system in which the data is being collected, uh, uh, the details will be validated against the databases that the government has uh, with it from the various uh, administrative sources. Once we are able to form up the implementation framework for the National Business Register, these, uh, you know, uh, as I was saying, that these, uh, these the, the, the data of the registration of establishments will be coming to us and how we validate against them will be a key factor. And once we validate them against uh, the data that is coming in, we'll be throwing the, system, the data back to the CSC ecosystem to validate again if there are inconsistencies, mismatches found in the registration details. Right? The, the registration details will be in two stages, the primary registration and the additional licenses. The primary registration is something that an establishment requires mandatorily to set up its establishment. Uh, like for running facilities, for uh, you know electricity connection, for a power uh, connection, for a, uh, construction related activities, whatever like uh, the primary registration is required. Like you need a shop, shop and establishment act registration be even before you can set up your business. So these essential mandatory licenses, the mandatory registrations are what will feature in the primary registration acts. This will appear in the drop down menu on the app. All the enumerator has to do is select the appropriate option from the list of drop down menus. Uh, here one thing has to be noted that multiple selections of in terms of registrations can be done by the enumerator. So an, uh, <coughs> if an establishment says that it's registered with the Shops and Establishment Act as well as the Companies Act, he can enter the details and he can uh, and in fact he should enter the details of both the registrations. Uh, so in registration he will, has to enter, he will have to enter registration date, registration place and the registration uh, time. So these, these details have to be entered for each of the registration cases. 
I'll go to the one, uh, one, I'll go to the primary registration acts one by one. Number one is the Shops and Establishment Act. As I said, is a very mandatory act under which all the shops are uh, required, basically mandatorily require registration even before they can set up operations. Then Companies Act 2013 is mandatory for all companies and cooperates to be registered to be uh, registered before they can start operating. Then there is Indian Trust Act of 1882, including State Public Trust Act, because all the many states have their own versions of the Public Trust Act, so it could be registered with the State Public Trust Act also. Then there is a Societies Registration Act 1860. So essentially, here we have here the really has a checkpoint of validity because the society's registration, if somebody says that it is the ownership type is so cooperative or societies earlier, then he has to mandatorily fill, fill uh, the society's registration act details at this segment. Then we have the Cooperative Societies Act, um, uh, like I said earlier also in one of the videos that Amul and IFCO uh, and then cooperative banks are examples of this kind of uh, activity. So this uh, certain establishments will be registered with the Cooperative Societies Act 1912. Then there could be establishments which are like branches of foreign companies which are not registered under the Companies Act like there are foreign banks who have branches in India but are not registered under the, foreign, uh, I mean, the Companies Act of India. These will come as a separate category and there could be many instances where the establishment will say that I am not registered under any of these acts. So that will also appear as one single menu option in the drop down for the enumerator. And then finally uh, the, the, they can say that there are certain registration acts under which they are covered or which they are registered but are not covered in any of the list of listed options above then there is an option for any other act not covered above as well. Then we come to the next uh, stage that is the once the primary registration details have been captured there can be additional additional industry specific license that a particular establishment needs to make. For example for GST uh, any establishment which has an annual turnover of more than 20 lakh has to be registered under the GST Act. For, so we consider this GST as an additional license. So they set up business and on, in the process of business they attain a turnover of say 20 lakhs and then they register with GST. This is the logic of breaking the registration details to capture in two phases, the primary and then the additional licenses. So again here these industry specific licenses can be entered in it through a drop down menu available on the web itself, uh, on the IT application itself. So the enumerator has to select from the drop down list. Uh, the options that are available here, as uh, I said, one of the most important acts is the GST Act, Loads and Services Tax Act, all establishments with annual turnover of 20 lakh. So uh, the innovator has to check that if an establishment has said the annual turnover is more than 20 lakhs, then it has to mandatorily uh, the, the, the enumerator has to mandatorily inquire with that establishment again that if the, the GST details must be filled. It could be a case that the GST is not still registered with GST but the inquiry has to be deeper in such cases where the annual turnover is more than 20 lakhs that whether it is registered with GST Act or not. Then there is the Factories Act which is more or less a labor policy act uh, for security and safety of the employees, the, the various factories. Uh, there are about two and a half lakh uh, factories across India which are registered across in the Factories Act. We have the data with, available with us. Again, like I said, just to emphasize again on the point, we will be checking whatever data comes, we will be checking against the database available with us from these registration authorities and we will ensure that uh, there are no mismatches and uh, uh, you know inconsistencies between the data collected and the data available with us. Then comes the FSSAI, the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India registration. All hotels, um, uh, you know, food processing manufacturers, suppliers, restaurants are mandatorily to be registered under FSSAI. So all the, uh, you know, NIC, uh, the, the categories of food processing, food manufacturer of food products and beverages have to be mandatorily registered with the FSSAI. So the enumerators have to place additional caution on this fact. Then there are organized. Uh, sector organized, organized sector establishments which uh, registered themselves under the EPFO, the Employees Provident Fund Organization and Employees State Insurance Company, uh, State, State Insurance Corporation. This is for availing their, to their uh, uh, employees certain benefits. The EPFO and ESIC registration is to make available to the employees certain benefits of uh, employee benefits at a later stage during superannuation or so forth. So an establishment can be, uh, 
is required to take registration under these um, categories if it is under the organized sector. Then the other categories that we have under uh, this additional licenses um, uh, drop down is the Khadi and Village Industries Commission or the Khadi and in, uh, Village Industries Board, some that they call it. Then there is a big component of MSMEs, uh, the, the micro, small and medium enterprises which will be registered as uh, with this uh, Small Scale Industries uh, act, uh, act and the Udyog Aadhar Memorandum which has been recently rolled out by the government of uh, Ministry of MSME, the Udyog Aadhar Memorandum. So they will have either of the two registrations, the Small Scale Industries registration will be for the establishments which have taken registration way back and the Udyog Aadhar Memorandum will be registration for the MSMEs which have registered in uh, the recent few years. And then final, uh, we also have the <coughs> Options of Development Commissioner of Handicraft, the Handicrafts and Handloom, and then Choir Board, Silk Board, Jute Commissioners, these are commodity boards, we call it. This is a separate category. So, most of these artisans, the handicraft makers, the handloom makers, they were, you know, uh, not the bigger, bigger power looms, not the bigger, uh, you know, organizations doing such work, the smaller ones doing such uh, work, like, uh, will be registered with the uh, this particular kind of registration. Then there are certain state specific licenses like the labor license, the trade license, drug license, factory license, uh, uh, electricity board and of course uh, under the seven acts mandated by the 13th Finance Commission the states have done certain state business registers in many of the states. So they can all also say the establishment can also say that I have registered myself in the state business register like in Rajasthan they have a dynamic uh, mechanism of registering themselves uh, in the uh, state business register portal otherwise they are not able to you know access utilities and facilities or even of the uh, nature of electricity connection so these could be the cases that uh, uh, that the establishment will say that I registered in the state business register so all such state specific licenses will appear under this category of uh, like I said and then uh, there could be two other cases that one says that there is no, I do not have any licenses, additional licenses. Uh, there is a separate code for that. And if it says that you, in, in the above listed uh, licenses, there is no detail for uh, the, my, my registration, the, the detail under which I am registered is not available, then there is a specific code for that as well. That is 99. So we assume that most of the establishments, at least the bigger establishments will be having basic and the additional registration <coughs> which needs to be captured and as well as there will be a lot of organizations or small enterprises like a person teaching tuition in his own, own home, mm. right, may not have taken any kind of license or registration because he is doing it his own home. Similarly, a tailor sitting in the corner of a tailor doing a work in his own home or a boutique owner or a hairdresser yes. kind of people. So yes. they have to be covered at that no, under the no registration cases. Yes. Now I have seen one field is the application which is the head office dis details. So we are here co covering the establishment which is um, and their detail as on the spot where the establishment. But I see also a list, um, a, a part of the application which says head office details. So kindly let us know what is the importance of it and how and what all needs to be captured. Yes. So here uh, in economic census we go by an establishment approach. That is we take every structure where there is some economic activity going as an establishment. Now there can be bigger corporates which are conglomerates in their nature. These are enterprises where there can be multiple establishments under their umbrella like a Reliance Industries Limited is an enterprise. Under Reliance Industries there could be a Reliance in Jamnagar, a Reliance in uh, other state and uh, it could be spread across all the states of the country. So these uh, individual branches of the main corporate enterprise will be establishments whereas the main corporate is basically an enterprise. So in order to capture this mapping between establishments and enterprise, we are looking for the head office details, the corporate office details. This linkage is extremely crucial to determine many important uh, you know, statistical activities such as even the national income uh, accounting uh, which we generally call by GDP, we generally know as GDP. So this, uh, the establishment to the enterprise linkage is absolutely essential. Uh, in most of the cases it will happen that in, in term, uh, for conglomerates the PAN number will remain the same. So for these uh, uh, cases where we are asking for the head office details, we are also asking for PAN number, the, you know, the registration details of the main office 
and the location and details of the main office if it is located elsewhere and the uh, you know certain more details like the contact details of the head office so please uh, the, 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 again we, we are emphasizing our uh, trust on the enumerator and the VAD to collect this information no uh, details that are being captured in the schedule are any less important for us but certain details like the registration details the workers details, the nature of activity, economic activity, the head office branching with the, the head office mapping with the branches, these are certain details which will help us define the roadmap for our future activities as well. Uh, so we, we would again repose our faith and request all the inverters and dailies to do uh, utmost, you know, take utmost sincerity and of course we are filling these details through the schedule of the uh, seven economic. So one more question arises that there may be franchises like uh, uh, they are independent franchises of petrol pumps. They are not related with each other except that they are a franchisee of an Indian oil or Hindustan petroleum. Similarly, there could be a McDonald's and they are franchises. They are not under their owners. They only share a brand with them. So uh, do we need to uh, capture the head office detail of the main franchisee in that case? Yes, we do. In that case, the PAN number will be different for the franchisee branch and the main office. And that in, in any case, through this PAN number difference, we will be able to track whether an establishment is a franchisee or a subsidiary. The a subsidiary we call it because if uh, a main office, like I said, Reliance, it will have its own subsidiaries, not franchises at various places. So the difference between subsidiary and franchisee will very well come out from the fact that the branch office PAN number and the uh, main office PAN number will be different in the two cases. So we have been uh, giving a lot of weightage to the National Business Register and um, the many states have been trying to build their own state business register. So in this context of 7th PC, I would like to ask what is the National Business Register that the ministry envisages to build and what are its uses and what are the uh, why it is crucial for developing uh, this business register. Yes. So again, like I have, been, uh, I have also mentioned in the beginning of this video that the outcome or the key outcome of this entire activity of selling economic census is not only the database of establishments but then developing a national business register which can be dynamically updated. Now we have decided uh, from at the highest level that the economic census will be conducted every three years. So the effect is basically to you know update the remaining portion which cannot be updated through the business register. So the business register will provide a mechanism of dynamic updation. In addition, what cannot be updated will be done every three years. So it's a big exercise that we're going to do on a rolling basis from now on. This is not a stock exercise. This will keep continuing forever now. Now this will become the mainstay of policy planning in terms of economic characteristics of the various establishments of the country. So the business register to give you an idea is basically a comprehensive list of all establishments in the country with a specified uh, work uh, uh, employee size with a, in, in the, across different categories of uh, economic activities across different uh, locations, their clustering, their penetration and how you know device, policies can be devised by the local level government, the state level government and the national government in order to address the needs of the businesses, the economic activities across these clusters, trade and geography. The primary use of this database will be that we are going to update this. This will not be a stock exercise as I said. Uh, we will update it through certain mechanisms. We will be linking it to various databases of registration authorities of these establishments and we will uh, we are asking in the 7th economic census for the mobile number of the owner or the respondent. Through this mobile number we will be authenticating the data uh, and the snippets of the data captured will be sent to the owner and he has to verify by, uh, uh, by, by response to the mobile message or on the uh, information portal that will be soon providing on the uh, internet whether his details are correct or not and he can in fact update the details as and when uh, he feels that the details are needed to be updated. So this national business register then will finally be disaggregated across states and the states will be updating their partial components in their own manners also. So for this national business register, we are trying to have in place uh, a database which will have say the location and details, the mobile number, the ownership type, the number of persons engaged in the enterprise, the PAN details of the enterprise, the registration details and the license details of the enterprise, the turnover of the establishment, 
the investment in plant and machinery of the establishment and the nature of economic activity. So we'll build the business register based on these variables and uh, you can imagine that uh, a database of such a big nature or such a humongous nature with all these data, data fields filled in it will be of great use to the uh, state, local level as well as you know the national government for all sorts of planning and uh, policy purposes. So thank you very much sir. Uh, we, uh, we have been able to um, capture a lot of important details and uh, know about them and how they have to be filled up and what due care has to be taken and the importance of massive business register as well. Uh, ministry has uh, given a lot of responsibility on CSC BLEs and CSC SPV. As well as I am also very thankful to you and the Ministry for giving us so much time in making these videos which have been uploaded on YouTube as well as making the concepts and definition notebook which is available on the website in regional languages. We have You have helped us in developing a lot of contents which has gone on the learning management system. On and all, a lot of effort has been made by Ministry in imparting the training to enumerators and supervisors and I hope that all enumerators and supervisors uh, take <coughs> due care and take their responsibility and learn from these videos and incorporate in their operations. It is also the role and responsibility of all the district managers and district coordinators as well as the uh, state project coordinators to ensure that all the information, all the information are disseminated to the right stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you.